And in today's video, we will be taking a look at the Kharkiv front, the recently opened northern front line, uh, where Russia has uh, conducted an assault uh, out of the Belgorod Oblast into northern Ukraine. And more specifically, we will be taking a look at battlefield Vovchansk. So where is this uh, place located? Well, uh, we're going to be taking a look up here because this is where we have the recent Russian incursions from the north. Uh, and we have specific, we can take a look at the second map here. This is where the Russians have pushed in and they have pushed in over here. And this is where we have Vovchansk. And this is where we will be focusing. Uh, in this video, we will also be taking a look over here at the other front line, but mainly Vovchansk. And I believe that Vovchansk potentially could become the next Bakhmut, the next Avdivka, because of its importance. Uh, Russians are trying to push in here along the main highway. And as you can see, Vovchansk is right smack in the middle. Uh, preventing uh, Russia from sending in logistics and troops and what have you at speed along the main uh, road grid. So they need both chance. They can't bypass it. Well, they can try and bypass it, but in the end they need to assault it and grab it. If they have, are to stand any chance of pushing on into Ukraine and be a threat in the north. Uh, some pro-Russian channels have reported that Russia is trying to push in uh, various locations around here as well, trying to, for a pincer move. Uh, may or may not be true, but keep that in mind. Uh, may be updated later on. Uh, they also, the pro-Russians also report of a bridge blown over in this area, uh, preventing Ukraine from sending troops uh, back and forth. Also. A bridge has been blown here, I believe, preventing Ukraine from sending troops back and forth this way. So keep that in mind. Russia is trying to isolate Vovchansk, basically uh, forcing Ukraine to send in uh, reinforcements from Kupiansk. Or if reinforcements are going to come from uh, Kharkiv, they're going to have to take a long way around uh, the rivers and lakes uh, further south. And... Uh, Sarichne and Luman. Jesus Christ, Ukraine. You, they reuse every goddamn village name. Uh, anyway, uh, Vovchansk. Yes, this is going to be absolutely crucial for Russia to have any form of success uh, in this new Kharkiv offensive. And if we zoom in a bit with the, the deep state map, we can see here this is contested and it's contested because the Russians are uh, moving around in this area. Uh, probably, maybe they have established control, uh, who knows, or they've just, you know, done some recon, pushed in a bit. But uh, I'm leaning towards that this is actually occupied territory at the moment. And as you can see, Vovchansk is a big uh, settlement. It's a big urban area. We have a river that is a natural obstacle and we have a bunch of bridges. And if Russia wants to push on along the main highway here, uh, well then, or it's the main highway goes over here even, uh, they need to secure the various bridges. They need to secure this part of town and they need to get across the river and fight our way through all of this. So we're going to go over to the Google uh, Earth map to get a better, uh, well, get better graphics of what we're looking at. And uh, so we have Google Earth and we are going to be zooming in on this section here because this is where we have all the bridges that are so crucial and vital for Russian success and for Ukrainian success in defending this city and preventing Russia any chance of pushing further south. And here we go. Here we have uh, a bridge. We have uh, another bridge, yet another bridge, 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 and what have you. So these are the bridges that Russia needs in order to push on. And as you can see, it is one hell of a fight. Uh, the Ukrainians more than likely have fortified this town uh, beyond compare. Uh, this is a fortress, 
and the Russians, they need to be able to deal with this somehow, uh, and preferably without uh, relying solely on a direct assault. They will assault the city head on uh, to apply pressure to the Ukrainians, uh, provide problems for the Ukrainians, and slowly begin to crawl their way into the city. But <clears throat> I do believe that what the Russians will try is not the head-on approach primarily, they will try and uh, outflank the city. Because off to the west we have Hatusha, it is in the grey zone, more than likely this small village town is in Russian control. We have the uh, river directly south of it and if we follow the river we see a couple of interesting locations. Uh, down here we have road network on the uh, Ukrainian side, the south side of the river. And as you can see, the roads seem to connect despite the river. The same thing goes here. You can even see that road moves over here, right? So potentially we have two smaller bridges uh, that will probably be uh, blown if they are actual physical bridges uh, by Ukraine. But more importantly, we have this located right here. Uh, these two potential crossings, they're over here, by the way. But this area here is this. And doesn't this look like a ford? Doesn't this look like a shallow end of the river where you could potentially rely on vehicles to drive across? I mean, we have a dirt track leading all the way over here and I don't know what this is but you know this does look like it's traversable that Russia could push across here with their vehicles this is obviously a good spot for Ukraine to just launch every piece of artillery uh, they have uh, at this location uh, but still you can't destroy a ford like you can destroy a bridge this opening this crossing will remain in place forever unless ukraine blows up a dam or something like the russians uh, keep doing uh, so yes i believe that russia will make an attempt at crossing here even though uh, this will be the most obvious place to uh, hold the line for ukraine with massed artillery and there is a reason why they want to cross here apart from uh, not having to rely on bridges it uh, it makes all the sense in the world trying to secure uh, this ford this crossing because if russia manages to grab this ford the crossing it's right here and over here you had the potential smaller bridges but this ford the crossing that gives Russia access, if they manage to cross the open fields here, uh, of course, uh, to this massive woodland, this forest. And if they're in the forest, that is a much better uh, terrain to fight in than an urban environment. Because in an urban environment, you need, if you follow Western doctrine, a 10 to 1 advantage to uh, be able to outgun the enemy, outshoot the enemy, and have enough troops uh, to uh, sustain casualties, because the enemy has the upper hand in this sort of environment, and you will take massive amounts of casualties. So you need the 10, uh, 10 to 1 advantage to uh, be able to soak casualties and still prevail in any gunfight. And you also need the 10 to 1 advantage to be able to cover multiple angles as you're pushing down uh, streets, uh, going through buildings, securing one room at a time and stuff like that. It's very costly uh, in terms of resources and manpower to push into urban environments. Over here, according to traditional doctrine, you only need a three to one advantage uh, to succeed over an enemy. Uh, these are Estimates, you know, what you uh, try to achieve, if you, if you only have a 2 to 1 advantage, that's the card you're dealt. Or if it's a 1 on 1, 
that's a rough spot, but it's the card you're, you've been dealt. But here you can get away with at least two to one or a three to one advantage with say two units pinning, pinning one enemy unit and then the third can move in and outflank, force the enemy to withdraw or get caught in a kill box. That's the absolute basics of it. So that is why Russia will more than likely try and secure a crossing over the river over here and maybe potentially elsewhere to get access to the forest, fight their way through this easier terrain to fight in compared to here, and then be able to fight their way all the way up to the city uh, to in order to gain access to the urban areas instead of trying to cross open terrain before they can cross and uh, get access to the urban areas. So. I think Russia will come from Hatishne, try and cross the river, fight their way through the forest, and by so doing, outflanking the city, while at the same time launching attacks head on, because they need to uh, occupy the Ukrainians, force the Ukrainians to send troops, uh, manpower, weapons, ammunition, food, supplies, whatever, across the river to hold the northern end as well, as well as uh, defending down here, right? So they have to. Uh, spread their uh, resources thin, uh, defending north of the river and defending the tree line here, and initially also up here. So this is what I predict will most likely happen in the coming days. And not only that, if Russia does manage to get across here and uh, be able to threaten Vol, uh, Volchansk, Volchansk, as it says on this image. Oh, look, I'm drawing arrows. And as you know, if someone is drawing arrows on a map on YouTube, trying to explain to you, predict military movement, movement, that guy is guaranteed to be a douchebag. So take everything he says with a grain of salt. So, and this obviously applies to me as well. Uh, but I do think I have a, oh, God damn headset keeps shutting down. Oh, I need to buy a new one. Anyway, uh, where was it? Yeah, I, I have a decent track record when it comes to predicting where uh, they will be moving operationally and even uh, tactically. So we'll see if I fuck things up this time around or if, you know, I pull it off once more. Anyway, uh, assholes drawing arrows on a map trying to predict military movement. So, yes, uh, I think Russia will come down this way, like I said. And if they do have the forest, th yeah, I mean, they can continue down the forest. I wonder what this shape will look like. Okay, uh, down the forest and outmaneuver one small town after. What is that? I don't know what that is. Oh, what's going on? Uh, one town after the other uh, all along down here. Uh, following, uh, following, <laughs> following the uh, the river south, following the forest south, and by so doing, they grab one small town after the other and securing the highway going south. Right? Seems to make sense. Instead of fighting over here, fight. Russia doesn't want to fight over here. There's no. They want to fight in here where there's cover, lots of cover. And uh, yes, it's cover for the Ukrainians as well, but I mean, over here, there are only so many approach points. Over here, there's an approach point across the entire forest, right? So Russia wants to get into the forest. They want to outflank Bovchansk. They want to outflank Sinelkove, Prilipka, Liman, Ravske, Seminivka, Vernipsarivka, and so on, right? And just push south in the forest and take one town after the next. And in so doing, securing this uh, supply route south and ensuring logistics can come through here. And uh, and they're going to be pushing out this way as well to secure the uh, logistic, uh, the supply route. So logistics can move in and supply them as they're pushing south. So that's my prediction what's going to happen at Vovchansk. Um, they want the forest. They're gonna tr try and secure the ford, uh, the crossing over the river. 
uh, get into the forest, outflank Bovchansk as they are still assaulting head on north of the river to uh, cause as much problems for the Ukrainians as possible. And once they are in the forest, they can begin to push south to outflank even more settlements and cause massive trouble for the Ukrainians. If everything goes to plan uh, for the Russians, Ukraine will obviously do their damnedest to prevent all of this from happening. And uh, with a little bit of luck, they will succeed. And yeah, with, uh, like I said, with a little bit of luck, they will succeed because the Russians uh, are up at Titisha. They will probably fight their way and make sure they control the entire forest. And then they need to push in to the northern end of Bobchansk. It's a bit open area. Uh, difficult to cross, but they can still move from building to building, but it's still an urban area and I mean, they're gonna need at least a 5 to 1 advantage. Uh, you want a 10 to 1 advantage, uh, if possible, if or in order to push in uh, Bovchansk in the north. And they're gonna need to continue to have that 10 to 1 advantage, pushing through this entire northern part of the town or of the city to reach these vital bridges. Uh, they can reach this bridge a bit more easily. Obviously, as you can see here, this may be a, maybe a five to one advantage area over here. Uh, mixed uh, forests, open area and uh, urban. So yeah, five to one maybe. Uh, but the bridge is going to be blown. So they're going to be able to push up to river, but not be able to cross. So they won't be able to cross. They have to go into this 10 to one uh, area, grab potentially bridge or two unless the Ukrainians just blows everything up and then Russia does what well you have the Ford and it's a and when it comes to prepared defenses uh, not urban areas but prepared defenses let's say trenches bunkers and some other stuff like that uh, you know proper defenses they say you need a five to one advantage to uh, uh, overcome those and I'm yes this is a funnel this is a bottleneck uh, so, and it will be defended. So five to one may be a bit low. Maybe this should be considered a 10 to one uh, uh, situation, uh, being able, just to be able to cross over. Um, but it's, mm, I don't know, is it a better situation over here than over here? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. Uh, I may have been a bit, uh, a bit lenient on the numbers here uh, to be honest but anyway this if they can get across your Russia then they have the forest and that is a three to one region where you can get away with a three to one advantage uh, and even if there's trench lines you get away with a five to one advantage uh, fighting your way through the forest it's still a better option than fighting over here where you need the ten to one advantage right so this is why I'm fairly convinced that Russia will try and get across here and here, maybe somewhere else where they can rely on engineers to build bridges and you know, get into the forest and be able to push in and outflank the city of Vovchansk. Uh, <laughs> phone call. Uh, interrupted everything anyway uh, so yeah so Russia has uh, aimed their main attacks straight here going for Lipsy by the looks of it and for Bovchansk and I mean from what we know it appears as if Russia has amassed 50,000 troops in total in the north to th threaten uh, Ukraine from the north and it would appear as if they of those 50,000 30,000 are in Belgorod aimed towards Bovchansk and Lipsy. And that presents a bit of a problem for the Russians because if Ukraine has 5,000 men in Bovchansk, Russia would need <clears throat> at least 50,000 troops for Bovchansk alone. Uh, so uh, I don't know how many troops Ukraine has over here, but I mean, if they have a thousand, two thousand, uh, that could present itself a problem when it's time for Russia to push into the town. 
especially if they also want to be able to push into Lipsy, and Lipsy is no small settlement. Uh, that's a big uh, town, it's uh, almost a city in its own right. So we'll see, uh, maybe the Russians only want to push in a bit to secure the border so that the uh, Russian rebels can't strike into Belgorod from Ukraine, so they just want to push in a couple of miles, a couple of kilometers, and then hold the line down here so that Ukraine uh, cannot send in Russian rebels to strike at uh, targets on actual Russian soil. That could also be it. So that Russia is, they, Russia may not actually be after uh, these settlements. They may not actually be after pushing deeper into Ukraine, uh, which could explain the low number of troops sent in to threaten these two large towns. We'll see what happens. And that's it for this time around. Uh, I hope you found it interesting. We'll see what happens if Russia has enough momentum to cross the river to threaten Bobchansk and uh, continue southward. Or if Ukraine will be able to hold the line. Or if Russia is just fine pushing out to the river. And maybe they don't want to push south of it at all. Uh, who knows? Anyway. As always, go Pomarsh, Ukraine, give them hell.